Happy Arvo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. And welcome to To This Week in Australia. That's right. We're all the way from up top here in Indiana. I'm going down under to see what happened in Australia this week. Will you join me? You got no choice now. You already clicked the video. Let's go. And right out of the gate, wow. The Albanese government is gonna wipe $3 billion of student debt, benefiting 3 million people. Congrats to those 3 million people. And my deepest condolences to anybody who just paid off their student debt. You know, there's that one guy out there who like scrounged together all his money. He's like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to make my car payment this month, but I just, I, I'm going to put it all toward my student debt and he paid it all off last week. Um, just to get this news, my condolences to you, but in all seriousness, that's pretty cool. Um, congrats to those people. Here, let me try and fix this. All right, so just reading through this article a little bit. Um, I mean, this is pretty cool, you know. Anything helps, obviously. But it looks like basically they're they're contributing a little bit of money to a lot of people across um, the board, I guess. If you, you know, owe up to $130,000 in student debt. I mean, like, if you owe 15 grand, you're going to get 600 bucks over the next two years, 2023 and 2024. Um, hey, that's something that helps. If you owe 30,000 bucks, you're going to get a 1,300 bucks. Okay. Hey, that helps. Uh, over here, Biden happens to be doing, like, the same exact kind of thing. It's interesting how a lot of po globally a lot of politics like go hand in hand these days it feels like but he's been forgiving some student loans and stuff seems like for everybody but me <laughs> I don't quite fit whatever qualifications cuz I didn't sign up for the correct plan that he's forgiving loans on um yeah Damn, this is a crazy chart. How much, how many and how much they owe? Shout out to the less than five people out there in Australia. Less than five of you who owe over 400 grand. Less than five of you. So how many of you are there? Less than five. There's $2 million owed. So there's probably about three or four of you out there. Unless it's just one dude. One dude who owes two million bucks. Shout out to that guy. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Shout out to this guy who, uh, who complained 20,716 times about noise on an Australian airplane's what does this mean? Was he in the plane or is his house? His house is probably located right next to the airport. And he's like complaining literally 100 times a day. Am I doing the math on that right? Almost 100 times a day? That, you know, hey, you got to quiet those planes down. Every time a plane takes off or lands, he complains. That was too loud. <laughs> Apparently is a Perth resident. Um, he's responsible for nearly half of all the complaints. I wonder if it's the same dude who owes $2 million on his student loans. Maybe that's why he's a little bit just bitter at life. Taking it out on the airplane industry. Okay, he does live under a flight path. I was thinking at first I thought it was like he was complaining on the plane that other people were being too loud. I was just thinking, how often does this dude fly? How how could you complain 20,000 times? I mean, this is just as ridiculous, though. 20,000, I mean, let's do the math. He did the math. 20,000. 
sorry folks, divided by 365 days in a year, this dude complained 56 times, rounding up to 57 times a day. 57 times a day. You know, that's 2.3 times an hour. And that's not even... That's, that, that's assuming he's awake 24-7. You know, <laughs> assuming he sleeps. I mean, maybe that's the problem. He can't sleep. He has been unable to sleep and <laughs> for the entire year. So he's just been writing a complaint every 30 minutes. The runner-up, <laughs> which is also fascinating. The runner-up is from Brisbane. And he made 4,000 complaints. <laughs> so 10 times a day. I can't believe it. I mean, even that is crazy. I wouldn't have thought anybody did 10 complaints a day. I would have thought the runner-up maybe did like... Like... 25. You know what I mean? That would be crazy. 25 times, twice a month, complaining about the airplane noise. No, there's there's a guy out there in Australia doing it 100 or 50 times a day, and then there's another guy doing it 10 times a day. That is a full-time job. Hey, according to the UK Civil Aviation Authority, noise pollution from planes can harm a person's health and well-being. There you go. They're probably going to copy-paste that into their next 50,000 complaints right there. They're going to cite this article. Some study says that the combined medical cost burden for those living near airports, implying because of the plane noise, it's going to cost $800 million over 30 years. The plane noise. What? Are you sure about that? That's a lot of money. Maybe this is... <laughs> maybe this is a way bigger deal than I knew. I mean, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe it's just like a flaw on their website where you can complain and you can just be like... Click, 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 you just spam it. <laughs> That's what they do. I mean, I guess if that's all you had to do to complain about the noise, I could do 50 complaints in like one minute or less, maybe like 10 seconds. There, I complained 50 times. Oh, God, I broke my computer. Okay. Go on, spoil your mom on Mother's Day. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. What is this? The Cole's Mother's Day seasonal aisle? You got the giant teddy bears. Love that. Love that. You can do some dishwasher tablets. Thoughtful. Very thoughtful. A pot for 60 bucks. Damn, pots are going crazy. The inflation on pots is out of control, folks. Um, interesting aisle. Interesting combination here. Really spans, I guess it spans the full spectrum of practical to um, not practical. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting post. Okay, found an old rent increase letter from 2019. And, you know, the part he's highlighted is they're saying, I propose I will raise, I will increase the rent. The current rent is 1629 the new rent will be 1651 and it's like okay that seems you know <laughs> that's all right 22 bucks not bad honestly or yeah 22 bucks not bad i was like what is the point of this and then i read the comments they're all basically just reminiscing oh yes back in 2019 
when rent increases were only $20. <laughs> this guy says he actually had a rent reduction in 2016. From 420 a week to 400 a week. Those times are truly gone for good. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. I had to scroll back up and make sure this wasn't per week. That would be insane. 1600 per week, but 1600 per month. Ah, those were the days. I remember renting in my early 20 and the landlord regrettingly inform regrettably informing me that they had to raise the rent by $10 a month. Probably $4,000 a month now. Yeah. Ah, those were the days. And this is AUD, of course. So, that's actually pretty freaking cheap, huh? 1600 bucks a month. See, over here, that would be pretty pricey. But also, you know, that would be pretty kind of normal now. <laughs> uh, but back in those days, that was only, what, like 900 bucks or less? 800 bucks? Now, that's what I'm talking about. I'm always kind of amused by these posts about Woolies and Kohl's. The checkout. The checkouts are out of control. The self-checkouts over there. Which is wild, because we've had self-checkout for decades over here in the States. And, I mean, it's kind of stupid in my opinion. Like, you're... Obviously, they're just shifting the labor from having to hire someone to... Now you get to do it. But over there... All of a sudden, it's got, like, super dystopian. They have these gates where if you move the wrong way, this guy's talking about if you move too quickly or put something in the wrong place, all of a sudden, basically, they shut the gate. They lock you in. <laughs> I, I bet alarms start going off. <laughs> like, what the hell? That's crazy. I've actually never seen anything like that. Let's see what happened to this guy. It shows a video recording of what it thinks you stole. Oh, that's so cringy. That's so cringy. Actually, something like this kind of did happen to me. I just realized for the first time ever, I had a cart and, you know, my son was in the cart and I think it was at Target and we were done checking out and the machine was like, hold on. Before you leave, we have detected something in your cart. And the, the worker came over and was like, oh, it's just the baby bottle. You know, like my son's sippy cup. Like this. Was in the cart. And they're like, oh, that's all it was. You're good to go. And I'm like, what? That's never happened. So, okay, I amend what I said. It's absolutely happening over here in the States. But we don't have the little gates yet. That'll be the day. Two boys expelled from a Melbourne private school over offensive spreadsheet ranking female students. A tale as old as time. Damn. That's pretty harsh. Expelled. I mean, that is extremely creepy, though. You made a spreadsheet? Like, come on. That's a different level of creep, okay? Back in my day, boys used to just talk about it, you know? The ranking was just, like, spoken words, which is already bad enough. <laughs> but to make a spreadsheet, it's like, what were you doing with that spreadsheet? What's the point? Are you selling it or something? Like, <laughs> like um, I don't know. It's got, like... It's weird vibes going on there. I want to read a little bit more into this. <laughs> Our future prime minister and Sky News Australia hosts. That's who was expelled. <laughs> the two boys. Oh, for God's sake. All right. This took it to a little bit of a different level here. Uh, the spreadsheet used terms such as wifies and cuties, which is innocent enough but then it also had this in it i'm not even gonna say that what yikes that 
now that uh that puts it into perspective a little bit on why they were expelled apparently network 10 one of the um australian like public broadcast channels is going under which to be honest i am not at all surprised to hear i'm surprised it's not happening more quickly i don't know how like tv has is surviving right now half the people i know don't even have cable and they don't watch tv at all let alone how is a radio surviving i really don't know how local radio is surviving which is sad but i just don't get it it's like i almost don't know anyone here where i live locally that listens to the local radio and that stuff is run on advertisements it's like how what are ad what are advertisers paying to advertise on these stations that no one's listening to i mean it's 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 sad you know but that's just the state of affairs netflix and hulu and all that all the streaming services and youtube huge competition for television especially the local stuff which i don't think i don't think network 10 is local i think that's like a national channel right so if they're struggling man that's bad a museum <clears throat> is going to officially brand itself as a toilet to keep men out it's gonna be a women's restroom now because they don't want men in there and under current law they're trying to they're trying to make it to where men can go in there so they're gonna make it a, a toilet for women that's pretty clever How, why is this a top post what is my gov how to get my gov to tell you who's sending you a message what this is literally just some like tech support thing what is this my gov access government services from one place hmm so it's like an an app cool so why can't you tell who's sending you a message <laughs> That's a pretty, you know, I feel like that's a pretty basic feature of an app. If someone's messaging you, it just says their name. I'm kind of curious. Let's see. It's surprisingly hard to find a source of angst for many. Oh, and a source of angst. However, you can adjust the setting. Go to contact details in your account. MyGov notification display. Show service name. Maybe they should just have that on by default. This snake was in their house. Uh, they're asking what kind of snake it is. I don't care about that. It's a snake. It's in their house, and now they can't find it. That is simply unacceptable to me as an American, maybe an Australian. You know, it's like if you, if you saw an ant go by and you're like, oh, you know, it's all right. Well, you know, it's not going to hurt me. This is a snake. And it's like, oh, it can't find it. It's somewhere in the house, but, you know, time for bed. No, you're going to have to sleep in the hotel. This is exactly the type of shit I need to see whenever I miss Australia. People are saying it's a freaking brown snake, which is actually going to kill you. So they are. My advice was warranted. You need to leave. Holy mother. <laughs> Carsales.com.au no longer displays the price. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, folks. And the implications are hilarious. Cars are so expensive now, they just don't tell you how expensive they are. 
it's it's like the lottery. You just got to sign up for the loan, then they'll tell you the payment. I absolutely agree with this for jobs. Man, anytime I've ever looked for a job, so annoying when it doesn't list anything about the salary or pay or hourly rate. I mean, I get why they do that. It's just so stupid. It's so stupid. I've seen enough. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a phenomenal weekend, guys. I didn't even realize it was Friday until like one minute before recording this. I was like, oh, it's this week in Australia. Let's go. Um, all right. I'll see you next week.